Hello, everyone. Welcome. Um, I'm hoping our mic's working. I'm hoping everything's working properly. I'm actually using my husband's phone because mine's dead flat and I wanted to have the mic on. I want to apologize for the background noise. I've got my husband, two sons, and two fans and the AC on as well, trying to keep it cool in here. So I know somebody will complain <laughs> when I put this on YouTube. Um, I can't do anything about it. It is hot. It's 31 degrees outside. It's close to like 40, 45 in here. It's pretty warm. So we'll see how we go. But I wanted to do today's live because later this week, Pure Eco's three new products are launching, which is really exciting. Um, and we're up to the final stage on this beautiful sideboard as well. So I thought I'd show it off and uh, talk about staining uh, with the new colours. There's two new colour stains. And staining in the heat as well. Um, I think it was last week I did a video, video on painting in the heat. So I want to talk about staining in the heat because it can be done. It's not ideal, um, but sometimes you've got to do what you've got to do. So uh, we have got three new products launching on Wednesday. I'm quickly going to show them to you as well. So we've got two new stains. These stains were actually my idea and um, LJ created them for me. So I specifically wanted a couple of stains that I could use for restoration. Um, whether it was matching, covering scratches, um, sorry, matching like stains as closely as possible, covering scratches, that sort of thing. Um, a lot of pieces that I get in that are in pretty rough condition, um, it's just like the top of it's really, really bad. So sometimes I like to just strip back the top and redo that. So I wanted a couple of stains that sort of matched most pieces so that and that's that's what we created so we've got sienna and we've got umber so we've got a beautiful orangey it's got a little bit of yellow to it and we've got umber which is this really nice brown but it's got a bit of red to it uh so two new stains um they i think don't quote me on it i think it's, it's either wednesday or thursday this week they're launching so a couple of weeks ago we it feels like a lifetime ago now. We actually did a live putting all the stains. I just put two of them down. That doesn't help you. To all, all the stains onto these boards. So this is stain and glaze. It's water-based, eco-friendly, Aussie made and owned, obviously. Um, it's by far, I, I've got too many favourites, but it is by far one of my favourite products in the range. I absolutely love it. It is the only stain I use except for the very rare occasion where one of these colors doesn't do what i need for a um restoration um in that case i go um to like bunnings or one of the hardware stores but these are the stains if i've stained a piece these are what i'm using otherwise i'll i'll say otherwise so um the original stains we've got storm and midnight so storms this really beautiful gray these are all on um pine boards i don't even know if i think we discovered that they weren't pine i don't know they came from kmart but they're on these pine boards so this is storm which is a really really nice gray got midnight which is a black sorry that light is the lights behind me not helping anyone is it um and then we've got i'll show you the two new ones in a second Oh, I'm missing two, I think, here still. So I've got Whisper, which is a white. Whisper just takes the yellowness out of the timber. So back of the boards and Whisper. It's very, very subtle, but it just takes the yellowness out of the timber. We've got Driftwood, which is really, really beautiful. Driftwood, Whisper, probably Sepia. And this one's Sepia. These are our most popular colors there's also carob and sable sable's a really dark chocolatey brown and then carob let, let me grab that board for you as well oliver sorry that's my son in the background talking into the fan because he can best behavior he's meant to be on he's meant to be decorating his party bags um where are we sable dark chocolate brown and carob which is like a gray based brown so, um, I don't have anywhere to put anything at the minute. Uh, we're just, it's just absolute chaos in here. So the two new colours, we've got umber, which is what we're using today. 
And then we've got Sienna, which is a real, their light is shocking in here. Hang on. Oh, that doesn't get any better. Hang on. Somewhere between the two windows. <laughs> That's better. So Sienna. So Sienna's quite orange. Think your standard orange pine furniture. I know this isn't going to be everyone's cup of tea. Um, but for those of you, if you just want to cover scratches, that sort of thing, it's perfect. And I'm actually going to, um, I've got some bottles in the way. I'm going to decant both of these and offer them in like a little two pack as well. For those of you who are just um, covering scratches, that sort of thing as well, you don't need a whole jar. So a little, I'll do a little um, pack for you guys. And then this is umber. So this is what we're using. So umber is, where'd my board go? Where are we? Um, this is sepia. This is sable. So this is umber here. Here in the middle. I'm just trying to make sure you can see what I'm doing. You right? Maybe be a bit more careful. Son's hurting himself. <laughs> Alright, so there are our new colours. We've also got um, a new basin blocker as well. I've already talked about these all at length, so this is just a quick little show and tell. Um, called a crew. It's a really beautiful um, cream beige. It will be really, really nice underneath like calico, fossil, um, clay would be really nice as well. So all those whites that aren't quite white, they're not sort of grey, they're just, they're beige. They're boring. Um, this is what you'd use underneath those. This has also been designed to create a faux timber finish. Um, so there's the base for that as well. That's going to be in another live. We're actually going to do a faux timber finish on the back of each of these boards. I just haven't had time. But that will be another live. Hopefully in the next couple of weeks is my goal. All right, so let me show you this beautiful sideboard. Um, and then let's do some stain. So we're applying the stain obviously in the heat today. So we need to keep that in mind. I'm just going to move these out of the road. Um, the new stains will come in the 600 mil tub and in the 250 mil tub as well. And I've got a couple of these to give away as well. The giveaway will be later this week. I'm thinking maybe Wednesday night, maybe Thursday. I've got a few ideas in my head, so we're going to have some fun. Um, let me show you this sideboard, show you what we're working with, and then we're going to pop our stain on. I'm just going to pop you out of the thing because it's a little easier. All right. The sun is – there's a crack on the phone, on the cover covering the camera, so it's sort of – Throwing off a colour, but this is our sideboard. Absolutely beautiful. It has been painted with Purico um, silk finish in the colour lead, which is this really nice grey. Um, I have a local friend who also restores. She had a couple of spare handles. Well, she had one of these. Uh, these two are the original ones. And then we couldn't find... These are really, really hard to find. I've had a few pieces with them. Um, but we have this one. It's not quite the same, but I think I think we got away with it. All right, and then inside has been painted with cotton in the silk finish range as well, just so it's a little bit brighter on that one, on the two glass doors. And this one, we're going to finish this with some oil. Um, I didn't feel like painting that was necessary just because that's a solid door, whereas these two have got the glass. And it just lifted it and brightened, brightened it a little bit. All right, and then our top. So this is solid oak. It is beautiful. It's got this pie crust detailing. Now you can see I've sanded this, electric sanded all of this. Uh, this pie crust, I've sort of used an electric sander as much as I can. It's really, really hard to do. Thank you, Linda. It's a beautiful colour. I was originally going to do carbon, but car carbon's our black and it was just too dark. And I actually didn't do it because I didn't have any. Um, but I'm so glad that I did lead instead. It's a really dark charcoal grey. It throws a little bit of blue, but I think, it, I think it suited this piece really, really well. So that worked out really well in the end. Um, yes, the edging, pie crust edging, sanded it as much electrically as I could with the, my sander. 
Um, as you can see though, there's still some stain in it. It's not enough to affect our stain today. I also don't mind it because it's gonna give us that little bit of contrast and highlight these details that little bit. But we're looking really good. I've just popped some tape back down to cover our edges. This one's got a bit of filler in it. So again, it sort of, it all matches in. Um, and because we're doing a darker color as well, a lot of that's gonna be hidden. So you're not gonna notice. So when you've got like an edging like this, you don't have to stress too much. You'll still get a really nice finish. So it is solid oak. This piece is heavy. My husband and I can uh, barely, barely, sorry, I'm just gonna pop you back in the stand. Barely lift it ourselves. What do you want? Yeah, that's what I thought. My almost eight year old. He wants to say hi. I'm gonna say hi. Hello, Dad. <laughs> All right, he's going. <laughs> All right, so coming in nice and close. Oops, I've always wanted to do one of these sideboards with the split level. It's been on my agenda for a long time. So I'm just gonna get you in so you can sort of see what we're doing. Um, so for staining, I always use one of our sponge applicators, they're six or seven dollars. They're on our website. They're absolutely brilliant. Um, anytime you're applying stain or applying top coat, get one of these. Our Mr. Bottle, hot weather. Like I use this normally for the hot weather. You need to have a Mr. Bottle on hand. Um, with like that's plenty of water, but you need to have one on hand with you before you start. Do not start staining. Um, if you don't have this already on hand because that stain is going to soak in and it's going to dry really, really fast. Um, this stain dries fast anyway. It is a water-based stain though, which means that we can wet it and keep it active. But obviously once it gets to that point, it's always going to get to that point where wetting it, no matter how much you wet it, it's going to get to that point where it's really not going to do anything. So you want to make sure that you've got a mister bottle on hand before you start, before you start. And your sponge, you want to have it nice and damp. So, because it is really hot in here, I'm going to wet it a little bit more than what I normally do. I love the misters because you can sort of control how much is going out. Sorry, the fans just blowed all of that mist all over the kids and Joe. So, you want it almost, almost dripping. For our stain, I've got this little... 50 ml, 50 ml, 100 ml sample pot from Pure Eco. They don't come in this size. This is just um, from Pure Eco. All new colors. Um, stockists get a little sample pot so that we can do our own um, display with them and so that we can do a few pieces like this as well um, for, I suppose, marketing and that sort of thing as well. So let me just grab a drink in my Pure Eco cup that we got at the retreat. Okay, so when it's a bit warm, I do like to wet down my timber a little bit more. Um, hot tip, good tip, hot tip. Um, if you spritz down your timber with some water, you'll actually see the natural color of the timber and what it will go if you put an oil on. What do you want? No, nah, off you go. Um, sorry. Children and lives don't go well. We all know that and we should know it by now, but we still do them anyway. Um, so, spritz down your timber. And I'm gonna spritz it maybe just a little bit more than normal. This is gonna help my stain flow. I also don't want my stain getting too dark. So, nice and spritz down. If I just put hemp oil on this, this is what it would look like. But we want a little bit more color. I don't want quite as much yellow. So with your damp sponge, you don't need a massive amount of stain. You're gonna go from one edge to the other as normal. I like to start at the back. I'm just gonna spritz down that side there a little bit more. I'm going to drag it along that edge just so that I can make sure. I have put my tape back down there just to sort of stop it from um, 
getting all over my paint. Obviously, if I do like there, I can wipe it off or I can um, I can still just paint over it as well. So, because it's all water-based, my paint's water-based, it's really easy. If you do get it somewhere you don't want it, you can just paint over it as well. So, at the moment, I'm just using what's already on my sponge. I'm really going to spread that out. Now, keeping in mind, because it is wet, the colour might look a little bit different than what it will once it's dry. Obviously, my timber's quite wet as well. So I just want a bit more warmth. And I think umber is going to become one of our most popular colors. I really, I think it's beautiful. And I think a lot of you will really, really like it as well. So you just sort of keep moving it around. When it's a bit warm, having that timber underneath helps it stay nice and active. But you just want to keep moving it until you're happy with it, until it looks nice and even. When you're coming up against an edge, sometimes it's nice to go the other way just to make sure like so all right so you want it to look nice and even if it's looking a bit patchy just keep going over it you can still spray it down a bit more as well again i'm going to pop a little bit more on my sponge and we're going to do this edge i like the sponge for my edges because i can sort of squeeze it and get it into the edge. I'm just gonna spray my sponge. And just get that stain. I'm just sort of going to use my finger and push it and get that stain into all those little nooks and crannies. I'm also gonna make sure, again, if I get it on my paint, not a big deal, I can paint over it and tidy it up. I'm just gonna slide that along that underside a little bit too. A little brush would also be suitable for doing this, but I find a sponge just as easy. You will get it all through your nails. It'll take a few days to come out, but it will come out because it is all water-based. Again, just because I've got that little line there, I'm just gonna nice and gently, sort of just wipe from the center out, just getting rid of any line that I might've created. You don't want that nice edge and then to have like a bit of a line on there. So we're just gonna, Wipe down gently, making sure we get rid of any line. Come around with me. We're going to do this centre. Uh, sorry, the front edge. So again, just a little bit of stain. You're not going to use much. Wipe it along. And you can see that stain is hiding pretty well. It's blending in those bits that weren't quite sanded a thousand percent and you can get away with that so don't you don't have to stress too much because I know how hard these little bits are obviously if you want a really pale timber finish like you want to use whisper the white even driftwood <coughs> you're going to see these marks that little bit more so do keep that in mind as well I'm just gonna spritz my sponge a little bit just help me maneuver that stain and making sure that I get it into all those little nooks and crannies. It's such a beautiful color. It's nice and warm. It's like, it's like a milk chocolate. Uh, sable, I always describe sable as a milk chocolate, but I feel like sable's closer to a dark chocolate when it's straight out of the jar without too much water on it. Um, you can get sable looking closer to this, but I really feel like this is more of a milk chocolate. It's got that warmth, but it's got a little bit more red to it. And I'm just going to take the back of my sponge. I'm going to spritz that. So this is the side that I haven't really done anything with. I'm just going to wipe that along. And that's going to help me, uh, remove any of that excess stain that might be sitting on that edge. And just make it look nice. Again, spritz my sponge and I'm just gonna wipe it along that top edge as well. I make sure any line that might be there, <coughs> excuse me, is um, removed. Isn't that beautiful? All right, let's go around, let's do the other side and then we'll do the very top because I'm gonna have to move the, um... thanks Oliver, he just clapped me. That's nice, isn't it? Uh, I'm gonna sit you here spin you around a little bit um i was going to say something i don't remember what it was does anyone have any questions um if you do please let me know 
All right. It's just like a tiny little splodge of paint just there. I'm just removing that. So again, I'm going to spritz down my timber. If we don't, um, it's just going to look really uneven. So we do want to make sure that it's as even. And now we've done one side. We want to make sure that we're doing the same thing on each one. If I didn't, it look a lot darker and it just wouldn't look as even as the other. All right. Nice spritz all over. Remove some of that. We're going to go back from the back to the edge and we're going to work our way down to the front and then just back and forth. Spreading out what's on our sponge first before we add any more. And because this is water based as well, um, well actually you can do it with oil based as well, it's not really a water based thing, but um, you can do more layers if you need to as well with no real issues i'm just going to pop a little bit more on there so just like a tiny little spot i just feel like i didn't quite have as much on there this time and we're just going to keep spreading that out oh here, here's joe harry's awake just rock him for me oliver just going to keep spreading that out like so. Whew, I tell you what, it's quite warm in here. So just like so, making sure it's nice and even. If I decide it's a bit light, I can come back in, I can add more of this. If I decide to change the colour, I can go darker. I can't really go lighter. Yes, you could put, say, the whisper, the white over the top. Um, it wouldn't go super light, but it, it would do something. Um, we're going to grab a little bit, just a little drop of the stain. I'm going to rub along this edge. All the way along. Just making sure I fill in all those cracks. Just pushing my nail down into the sponge so it gets a bit of an edge on it and wedging that down in that gap. Again, making sure that I get that little underside as well. If you need to, step back. I always paint sort of that underside lip, but you also want to make sure you've sanded enough and it's all nice and even under there. I'm just going to spritz down the back of my sponge again. So wipe that over, remove any of that excess. Just so it, um, so that the, looks even is what i'm looking for and i'm just going to wipe back and forth just with lots of my sponge i'm not adding any more like so as well just to spread out that edge and make sure it's nice and uh, tidy i'm just going to scooch around the camera a little bit oops hang on all right i think you can see yep you can see all right I'm going to grab another little bit on the edge of our sponge, just a little drop, and I'm going to do this edge as well. How beautiful is this colour? So this is umber. The sienna is quite yellow. I personally wouldn't use it on this. I don't think it would work, but I think umber is perfect. If I didn't have this, I'd probably do probably sepia, actually. Um, I think sable would be too dark for this piece. I don't want to go dark. I just didn't want quite as much contrast as what I had um, with the raw timber. It was just a bit too much for me. I'm just going to wipe down that way. I'm going to spritz my sponge just a little bit. And we're just going to wipe over that edge and get rid of that line as well. We don't want any lines. It should be nice and even. And by going up and down as well and not just doing this, it's making sure it's spreading it out so you're not getting you're not getting any of those lines in there. Just going to take the back of my sponge again. I'm going to wet it just a little bit. I'm just going to wipe it over that edge. Just to, I'm just going to get a little bit more stain in there. 
and I'm just wiping over it to remove some of that excess. There's just a little bit much on there. And it just lightens it off. Beautiful. How pretty. All right, let's do the very top. I'm just going to have to adjust the camera just a touch to bring you up a little bit higher so that you can see what we're doing. Gimme, I'm just going to wave you in the air for a second. <laughs> One, hang on, there's three legs. Give me a second. You're getting a 360 degree view of the studio. One more leg. That was pretty good, wasn't it? All right, let's bring you up here. That's pretty good, isn't it? There we go. All right. Stain all over. I'm going to have like brown fingernails for a few days. Oh, goodness me. Right. The very top. This time I've got the three edges, not just two, which is fine. Exactly the same process to what we've just done. So I'm going to spritz it down really, really well. Just trying to make sure I don't get too much water on what we've just done either. I'm going to try and keep it just here on the top. And again, what I've done to the others, I'm doing to the top so it's nice and consistent. When you've got a piece like this that's split, you want to try and be as consistent as you can so it all looks the same. So I'm going to get a nice big dollop on there. Well, this is where you see how short I am. I um, used the whipper snipper in the garden for the first time yesterday and I'll tell you what, my arm's hurting. It's not my shoulder like my husband said, it's my arm. It feels very tired and sore today. And then I whacked my elbow. There's a nice big bruise on, there was a bin near where I was trying to start it and I whacked my elbow on it. So it was a productive day, but it hurt. Just a little bit more stain. Spreading it around. If you feel like your surface is drying a little bit, which I do, you can just spritz over it as well. Okay, staying nice and consistent. One side to the next. You can sort of, you can go in any direction you like, but I tend to like going back and forth. You're not going to notice if you go that way instead. Um, it's just, this is habit for me more than anything. The stain works by soaking in and uh, staining that timber. So it's really up to you which way you want to go because it really won't matter. As long as you're nice and consistent with the amount that you're putting on, you're not going to notice if one area has got a little bit more than the other. I'm going to come down, do the edge. I'm just There's quite a bit of stain there on my sponge. Again, I'm just going to push my finger into it and get that edge. Then come down and get all these little cutouts. Like so. Oh, I'm so in love with this piece. I'm actually going to, before we go, I think we've still got like another hour, another 40 minutes. Um, I'm going to, It's. it will dry fast enough in here. I'll be able to oil this today and photograph it and then try and list it tonight i reckon is my goal Let's see how my afternoon pans out i'm just going to spritz the back of my sponge again just wipe along that edge removing some of that excess and then i'm just going to go back anywhere that i feel like i've missed a bit and this stain's really good like i can still go back over the other sections as well and look at all them and make sure that I've gotten it, got all the bits. And if I've missed any, then I can touch them up quite easily. And a tiny little bit more stain on my, I'm just going to move you over here, on my sponge. I'm going to do this edge. So again, just use my fingernail, pushing that stain out of the sponge. There's some there. Like so.
Oops. If I get any stain anywhere that I don't want it, I can just paint over it. Um, sometimes you'll be able to wipe it off as well, like a baby wipe. Could come in handy. Um, but sometimes it's easier just to do a little bit of paint over it. Because I've used silk finish, I can paint over those bits, not a problem. And it will all line up quite nicely. Just going to go back and forth on this edge. Get rid of that little line. Right, so make sure I get that front edge too. I pretty much already did it. I just want to make sure. Spraying the back of my sponge again. I'm just going to do this too. Just trying to get rid of that edge a little bit more. There we go. Beautiful. Right, let's switch around the other end. Come with me. You're so high up. It's a bit weird being that high. Normally you're like down here. <laughs> um, there's quite a bit of stain on my sponge, but I'm just going to put like a tiny little dab. And again, I'm just actually going to... Ooh. Oops. I'm going to come around here this side. It's a bit easier. Yeah, a tiny little bit more. You really don't use a lot of stain. So you don't need to go too heavy-handed with it. And this is all water-based. So if you like this colour but it's too dark for you, you can um, just decant some and add some water to it too so you get a slightly thinner consistency. You'll still get the colour but it won't be as dark. You can also mix it with the other stains. So you could mix it with, say, Whisper if you wanted to to create your own custom blend. So just make sure I get all those edges. I'm just going to wet my sponge just a little bit. And back and forth, making sure I get rid of that edge. And turn it over, spritz the back of it. Like so. Spritz the back of my sponge again, and I'm just going to wipe it along this edge and remove some of that excess. Like so. How oh, beautiful. Right, I've just missed a little bit down here, so while I'm standing here, I'm just going to, with just lots of my sponge, when you've got a lot of detailing like this, keep your sponge for a, sec a second. So I just have a little wander around your piece. If you have missed any areas, normally there's enough on your sponge that you can get some stain into it as well. Stand back a bit. Bring you back here. So you can see. Um, let me lower you down. Hang on, now you cook it. <laughs> Give me a second. Come on, legs. Now you're looking at the ground. That doesn't help you either. Hang on, which one tips? That one. Isn't she beautiful? So I'll bring you in for a closer look in a second. I'm just using what's on my sponge. I'm just making sure anywhere that I've missed gets covered as well. Ah, that looks really good. This edge is looking a little dark, so I'm just going to spritz the back of my cloth again. Just give it a little wipe. It's still just wet enough. By having that timber wet underneath as well, it's just wet enough that I can Wipe that down, making sure we don't have any of those edges that we don't want. That's so beautiful. All right, let me bring you closer. Let's have a little close-up. It's so pretty. 
I'm going to be sitting here all day now trying to get all this stuff off my fingers. <laughs> We're doing well. All right, let me bring you in for a closer look and move the camera because my husband wants another cup of tea by the looks of him. He's trying to get to the kitchen. I blocked him off. All right, so here's the full sideboard. So the colour we used was umber. What do you think? Do we like it? I really, really like it. I think it goes really well with lead. That crack in this screen, in this, I don't think I can get that off either. I like it. Ah, no. Nah. Sorry. The crack's like right on the screen. <laughs> we like it. Isn't it beautiful? Yes, it is. Thank you, Oliver. Oliver likes it. I hope you do too. Now edging. I love this sideboard. I'm so glad I finally got to do one. I think the colour goes really well with the hardware too. These are brass, um, but I haven't polished them too much. I've given them a clean, but I wanted them to still be quite aged. I didn't want them to be like a really bright brass against it. There we go. So that is... Purico's newest stain and glaze in the colour umber. These will be available later this week. Umber stain and glaze in a 250ml and in the 600 ml um, They'll also be Sienna. And then um, a crew, the new base and blocker colour, will also be available as well. I know I've got a few of you already wanting one. Um, that's it. That's our new, new, uh, newest stain. I'm so in love with it. I think it's beautiful. I think you guys are going to really, really like it as well. It's not as dark as Sable. Um, it's got a little bit more warmth than what Sepia does. It's just a really, really nice, really nice colour. LJ's just, she's nailed it as always. Um, I think that's it. That is it from me today. Have a lovely Monday afternoon. Stay cool. Uh, we're here all week. We are back to normal. Uh, normal hours, 9.30 till 2, 2, 2.30. Normally we don't leave till 2.30, but sometimes we leave at 2. That's why our hours say 2 o'clock. I did have somebody ask that the other day. Um, I have, let me show you for those interested. I have two really cute little pine tables. Um, our, this workshop, I'm actually going to close off this week probably tomorrow wednesday um so if you want to do that get into that quickly this camera's crap to show you anything but we've got this beautiful dresser the drawers literally slide like butter um move oliver i've got this beautiful little pot cupboard and then this tv unit as well that i'm listing later today um what else i've also got in for those of you who love a meat safe I have a meat safe. Now, it does need a new top, uh, it needs the top reattached. It's got a beautiful bit of detail. This piece is old. Um, previous owners at their guess, it's at least 100 years old. I'm not 100% sure, but it's beautiful. It's got so much patina and age. Thank you, Oliver. Oliver's trying to show it off for you. Stand in front of it, Oliver. Show us how tall it is, how tall you are. That, that's a draw, but there you go. It's almost as tall as an eight-year-old. It's so beautiful. It's got, there's the baby. Um, it's got this, uh, that's the very top bit, and then the actual top's there as well. This is the other pine table as well. They work really well as desks, hall tables, or as just small dining tables if you need one. Um, this one I've already shown you, and then I've got another dresser over there as well. Um, unfortunately, the mirror for that one is broken, uh, this one. So I'm going to have to take all that top bit off. It's in pretty rough shape, though, so I think this might even be a little project for us, I think. Thank you, Oliver. Um, I've just received some Pure Eco stock. We're going to have more coming in. Keep an eye on your emails uh, in the next, what are we, two weeks off. Keep an eye on your emails. Make sure you're subscribed. You're going to want to be. 
um, because our Black Friday sale is coming. So keep an eye out for that. We've got some really good deals this year. Um, I think that's it. That's it. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy your Monday. Um, as I said, we're back to normal. So uh, now that this project's done, we're at this stage in a minute, and I've got a little pot cupboard. I really, really want, I want to have some fun. So we're going to do a little pot cupboard with some decoupage on it. And then maybe that dresser that's in really bad shape. Unless something else comes in. I've got a lady looking for a commission, so we might do that. But, um, yes, that's what's happening. Have a wonderful Monday. It's hot. I'm ready for uh, a cold shower. <laughs> we are a bit warm in here, isn't it, bub? Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. It's not quite Christmas. I mean, We've got birthday. Christmas. Yeah, it's nearly Christmas. We've got a birthday first, but we try not to get into Christmas too much because his birthday is next week on the 21st of November. Yeah. My first boy is eight, aren't you? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. We've got to decorate some party bags because yeah. he's talked me into a birthday party. <laughs> All right. Bye, everyone. Have a good day.